Well, dairy milk is a complete food, so it's a package that is designed to give the growth and, 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 and be successful and make healthy individuals. From the same starting milk, we can end up with maybe 500 plus different varieties which have different flavors and textures in it. So I would say from a base material, we can make an, an in, almost endless supply of different types of diversity, which is amazing from one product. We would consider one of probably the most unique foods that comes from nature. Unique in the way that it has a it has protein, it has carbohydrates, it has lots of vitamins and minerals, um, which is very unique for one particular food to have, and it also has fat. Milk typically per serving, which would be an eight ounce glass, would have eight grams of protein. Um, the other types of plant-based milks typically won't have that much, but the other big difference is, is how they look in terms of the percent daily value. So all of them have to take into account the protein quality of the protein that they're using. And that directly translates into a lower percentage of the daily value. It isn't easy to make a beverage out of an almond or a cashew or an oat. Um, you have to add a lot of different ingredients to that. Well, technically, uh, milk has a standard, uh, according to the federal regulations, that it has to come from a mammary gland so these shouldn't technically, according to federal standards, be called milk. Yes, some people are lactose intolerant. Actually, they're probably more of what was designed by nature. All of us, apart from some very rare individuals, are designed to consume lactose when we're infants. So yogurt is a very fine product for people who have lactose intolerance. The other is cheese, because in the fermentation process of cheese, the bacteria we use as starter culture to make cheese they ferment the lactose. So by the time the cheese is made, almost all the lactose is gone. But I like to tell our cheese makers that we borrow the process of making cheese from the cow and the calf. When a calf suckles the, the cow and drinks milk, it goes into one of the stomachs of the calf. And in this, one of the stomachs of the calf, she produces, or he or she produces an enzyme called rennet that actually is secreted and it clots the milk into a soft little gel. That was what nature created, this kind of cheese making process inside the stomach of the calf. That was the basis of the cheese making industry. So the flavors that are created in the cheese depend on how we make the cheese and what cultures or enzymes we use in making the cheese. Basically, it's created by this cultures, fermentation. Like wine, like other kind of products, it's the fermentation that, that over aging creates these products. Our job here is to do applied research on dairy products, um, work with companies as they want to product develop a new ingredients, work with students that want to work on dairy related areas, uh, and, and transmit this knowledge to the, to the industry. The result is now that over 50% of the specialty cheese made in the U.S. is now made in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And so we produce over 800 million pounds of specialty cheese every year. For me, that's a great success because what it does is it keeps the small producers, the small cheese plants can still get in this business, make a higher value added product, and they can provide a decent milk price back to our farmers.